Hey everyone, this is Chris Yokel. I'm an associate professor of English here at Bristol. And today I'm here to tell you about a teaching tip that's been really helpful for me. So the syllabus, it's arguably the most important document in your course. And all of us have spent hours, and I mean hours, tweaking details on our syllabus before a semester so that our policies and our expectations for a course are clear, right? Uh, and we expect, or at least we hope, that students will take as much care reading this document as we have in putting it together. But let's be honest. Uh, we put so much work into our syllabus, and too often it's kind of boring. So are there some ways that we can fix that? So let's talk about wording. Now, the wording of a syllabus is often very precise and specific for important reasons, right? You want to be clear and direct, and you're trying to close every loophole um, that students might try and exploit. So we can't always change that too much. But one thing to consider is the language you use. For example, if you go and read your syllabus, do you notice that it has a lot of third person language in it, like students will do X. Consider switching that to you, me language, as in you, the student, and me, the professor. And if you think about it, this makes sense. A lot of us talk about the idea of a syllabus as an agreement between us and students. Well, why not use that language of you and me? in a relationship as a student and a teacher. And this is what hopefully we can agree on. And in that vein, you wanna also think about whether your syllabus comes across like you're demanding things of students in this kind of, you know, really harsh way. So one thing I try and do is use more of an asking approach. Uh, I am asking students to enter into an agreement with me for the semester. So I'll say things like this semester, I'll be asking you, to write three analysis papers, or I'll be asking you to post a weekly journal by midnight every Friday. So again, it's presenting this idea of an agreement and the student can decide to agree with that agreement or not, right? They can decide after looking at your syllabus that they wanna drop the class or eventually they wanna withdraw, or if they don't fulfill you know, the agreement, then obviously you know, they're not gonna get the grade that they would like. So those are a few thoughts about language. The other thing, of course, that we can change in terms of our syllabus is the visual presentation. So I picked this tip up from a colleague at another school a few years ago, that instead of just using a kind of standard old document format, why not try more of a multimedia format? So I'm a Mac user and in exploring what I discovered was that Pages has a newsletter template that already has, you know, nice headings, places to put pictures, sidebars, um, you know, different color and different size headings. So this made it really easy for me to just kind of take that and then add in, you know, change out the pictures, maybe change the color of the heading, uh, maybe change the sidebar colors, but, but I didn't, have to do a ton of work. I didn't have to create something from scratch. I was able to use this template already. And what that's allowed me to do is like add things like pictures and sidebars and like different colors and even different uh, fonts to just make things more visually interesting for our 21st century students who are used to seeing good design all over the place already. So going back to you know the the template for a second. So for instance, one of the things I do is uh, I pick a picture for the, the front page of the syllabus that kind of presents a vibe for the class or goes with the theme of the class. So a few years ago, I did a utopia and dystopia class uh, for English 102. And so I picked an image that tried to represent that duality of like utopia and dystopia in the same image. And then like on the sidebars, I've got an SLO sidebar and the picture is kind of like a little mountain with a path going up and a flag at the top. It's kind of like idea of like achievement and goal orientation. Or, you know, I've got a grading sidebar and the top image is just kind of a, you know, a red pen with like an A plus with a circle around it. Just quick like visual cues that 
quickly draw students' eyes to that information and, of course, connects to what that information is. And something else I've even done is uh, if I have like a, a class with just a few textbooks, like books we're using, I've even incorporated like small images of the book covers into the area with the textbook information. Again, just to, you know, get students interested in like, oh, these are our books for the class and this is what they look like. So just, you know, you can kind of play around and experiment, and explore and make it your own. The last thing I'll mention in terms of visual design and pictures uh, is that if you're looking for some good quality, uh, particularly copyright free pictures, check out the website unsplash.com. Uh, that's a great place that I found that has really good quality copyright free images. So you don't have to worry about violating any copyrights when you look for images to spruce up your syllabus. Giving your syllabus a facelift like this, making the language more inclusive, making it more visually engaging, it's not the most fundamental change to your course, right? But I think it can help great, create a good first impression with students and get them at least a little excited and hopefully engaged for the rest of the semester. And that's my teaching tip for you guys today. Thank you for watching this edition of Bristol Community College Teaching Tips. Um, this is the first of a series of videos which you can find here on the Bristol Community College YouTube channel at the Bristol Weekly or at the website for the LASH Center for Teaching and Learning on the Bristol Community College website. Links to these locations are below. We hope to see you when we do future videos about teaching tips that you can put into your classroom today.